It's time for From the Short Grass with Trey Schaap, a golf podcast for those who love golf, struggle with golf, and just like to enjoy the outdoors and fellowship with friends, all while chasing a ball around trying to put it in a four and a quarter inch diameter hole. From the Short Grass is brought to you by Stevens Incorporated, an independent financial services firm with the freedom to focus on what matters most. Blackman Auctions. For over 80 years, better auctions have always been Blackman Auctions. Beachwood Pinnacle Hotels. We partner with you to deliver high yield results by managing, developing, and investing in top quality hospitality assets. And now, from the short grass, here is your host, Trey Shap. Welcome to another edition of From the Short Grass. I am your host, Trey Shap. Coming up on this episode, when I was down in Tuscaloosa for the Arkansas Alabama football game, I sat down with new Alabama assistant golf coach Forrest Schultz. Forrest started his career in Arkansas, grew up in El Dorado. He played his high school golf for Parker's Chapel, the Trojans, played college golf for Henderson State. He started his golfing career at Hot Springs Country Club under Barry Howard's tutelage. He became a PGA professional. Then an opening at Henderson State looking for a new golf coach came around, and Forrest decided to apply. He got the job, coaching both the men's and women's teams at Henderson State University in Arkadelphia. After several successful years in Arkadelphia, winning the Gulf South Conference multiple times, Forrest took the head coaching job at Troy University in Troy, Alabama. He was there for a couple of years before joining Jay Sewell and the Alabama men's golf coaching staff. Coach Sewell and the Alabama Crimson Tide won the NCAA championship in 2013 and 2014. He has coached 33 All-Americans during his coaching career, and he is a member of the Golf Coaches Association Hall of Fame. You will learn more about Forrest Schultz and his track to where he is now coming up in a few minutes. Blackman Auctions since 1938. Better auctions have always been Blackman Auctions. If you're in the auction business and you want to go attend one of their auctions, find them on the web, blackmanauctions.com. They have their full list of upcoming auctions on their website, blackmanauctions.com. We're back with more after this. Stay with us. Heading to El Dorado to check out some live music or to play Mystic Creek? Stay at the Haywood, the only boutique hotel in the middle of downtown and the Murphy Arts District. If you are spending a weekend in Hot Springs, make plans now at the Marriott Courtyard close to Lake Hamilton and Oakwan. Beachwood Pinnacle Hotel Group manages both of these fine properties and you will rest easy knowing that your every need is taken care of. Beachwood Pinnacle Hotels on the web at bphotels.com. I'm Thomas Blackman with Blackman Auctions. I've heard it said that sometimes there are two best days with real estate ownership. It's the day you buy it and the day you sell it. Depending on where you are in your journey, let me help. If you're looking for that outdoor getaway or that home in the city, I can help. If you're looking at selling that outdoor property you haven't seen in three years, I can help. Or selling that home in the city that you've outgrown, I can help. Blackman Auctions is your one-stop real estate company. Since 1938, better auctions are Blackman Auctions. Welcome back to this edition of From the Short Grass. I am Trey Schapp. As one of Forrest Schultz's friends told me, you wouldn't have thought that he would end up being a golf coach. But that is where he is. On the tee, Forrest Schultz. Forrest, thanks for joining me on From the Short Grass. Do you remember the first time you ever stepped out and picked up a golf club? Yeah, I do. Down in Eldorado, Arkansas with my dad and um his group out there the first real shot i can remember hitting that was good was uh i got out of the pool and i, I grabbed his driver and they were teeing off in the late afternoon and i, I remember teeing off on one he told me to hit one and i hit it right down the middle and I, that's kind of a memory i have forever i don't really know what age i was i was probably seven or eight nine and then from there kind of got hooked on it the old el dorado cc yeah el dorado country club and the lions club really lions club is kind of where I cut my teeth. A lot of good players, as you know, Jared Black. We had a really good team for Parker's Chapel, Rob Frankus, and um, Trent, and all these guys that played college golf for a small 2A school in Arkansas. So that was really good, but we, we did it at the Lions Club. When did you know that you wanted to try and 
you know, perfect this game, if you will. And I'm, I know it's tough to say perfect it, but to use it as maybe a way to get your school paid for in college. Yeah, I mean, my path is certainly different in, in college. I ended up at Henderson State, but I was definitely a kid, and I'll even tell my players here at Alabama, um, I, I was good at everything, great at nothing. I played everything. So my mom was a tennis coach. She needed me. I played tennis. I played baseball, basketball, did everything, and, and golf, and was pretty good at it, but I never really locked in on anything until – college and then I found a way actually um had a, had an opportunity to to play at Henderson earn some scholarship towards the end and again wasn't the best player and it was about the end of my senior year I finally started figuring it out right and mm-hmm. I got out of college worked at Hot Springs and that's when I really started playing good golf for me and, and then that's when the whole idea of like God, I kind of could have done a lot of things better in college and I could maybe help guys not make the mistake of me in college and and when I say mistake just just to have more attention to detail to get the most out of your potential and so that's that's ultimately led me to coaching when do you think that it clicked with you that okay I want to make this part of my life forever and make a career out of it yeah I think it was I think it was my time at hot springs and just and towards the end of my my senior year I really was finishing up that senior year. I was playing good golf, but I didn't have all the pieces to maybe sustain three rounds. I'd play really good, be leading a tournament and finish sixth, seventh, whatever. Um, And that was when I got really hungry to to see how far I could go. But then at the same time, me and my my high school sweetheart, Holly, who I married, we got married the day after she graduated. So life hit me right in the mouth. I needed to work. I needed money. And so that kind of, I didn't take the traditional route of being a GA and and doing all those things. So I worked, and uh, but learned a lot about myself through Barry Howard, Philip Holly, Hot Springs, and playing with those guys every day. And there's a lot of good members there. And I kind of figured out the golf a little bit, and then that's when I started saying, if I have an opportunity to get myself back into college golf, I think that's where I want to be. What does Barry Howard mean to you? Uh, mentor, friend, uh, show, shows you how to work hard every day. I mean, anybody knows Barry knows he's – Every day, go, go, go. Um, Super compassionate guy. Uh, And I don't know if everybody sees all those qualities in Barry all the time because he just does his own thing. But I cannot speak to how much the traits that he does every day has bled into my professional life. I'm I'm still a PJ member because of Barry. I finished it because of that. Um, But, yeah, Barry's just always a guy who I can call and ask a question even to this day. So. You took the head coaching job at Henderson State. Was that a difficult decision? I mean, I know you talk about how you wanted to help more uh, kids learn the game, grow yeah. with the game. Was was that a tough decision to leave Hot Springs Country Club? And, and it move? was in, in a way, and in a way it wasn't because I think at that time Barry knew what I wanted to do. We had talked about it. I told him, and when that whole deal came open, and, and Kel Gober who. I mean, it's funny how life works. Me and Kel go all the way back to El Dorado, Arkansas. Our, yeah. Our, our, his father and my grandfather, same CPA firm, and started that together. So, um, anyways, with, with Hot Springs, uh, you know, like I said, Barry, that was difficult to leave them because you get comfortable at a place, and especially a place that treats you so well, the membership so well. We were loved everything about it. And I remember me and Barry, I actually accepted the job with Kale at Hot Springs. We played 18 holes. He offered me the job. I accepted it. Told Barry a little bit later, and I can just remember sitting there crying with him. And I get emotional thinking about it now um, just because he meant so much to me in that short time. Um, and Tim Zimmerabner as well. I mean, Tim was my swing coach in El Dorado when I was a kid. So I first got lessons from. And so to have him at Hot Springs and, and college, have Tim there, and, and to kind of be following that footpath a, a little bit, it was very emotional. Do you ever sit back, Forrest, and think how fortunate I was to be around two guys like that, a Tim Zim and a Barry Howard in your life? Oh, 100%. Because in Arkansas and, and – and really, in in the PGA of America, both those guys are are legendary for what they've done. And so, when you think back at how great Tim Tim was a great teacher, he was a great player. Barry was a great player and a great teacher. And to have those guys who kind of have different perspectives but are, are good at what they do, yeah, I don't think you, until you sit back and somebody asks you that question, yeah, it's it's monumental in a lot of things I've done. You got the job at Henderson State. Mm-hmm. You had to coach now. Yep. What was that like? It was great. Uh, it's funny. I actually was coaching. The seniors on that team were freshmen when I left Henderson State. 
And a lot of credit to them because I asked a few of those guys, I said, I need to be coach. Like, I, I'm 25 years old, and I'm coaching men and women. I mean, talk about – Yeah, you had both of them. I got both of them. So, I need to be coach. I can't be your friend. I can't be Forrest. I can't be – what. and they embraced that for me. And that, they did all those things. We worked really hard. I coach really hard because of that today. I coach really hard because of how I was coached as a kid. And when I say really hard, not that I'm – mean or or this or that but just intense like i'm an intense golf coach and that's a different narrative than a lot of other golf coaches i think it's led to our success and so they bought in on that and we won year one with both teams and we started building a program there um that has some is still being sustained today they're still doing a great job so i'm proud of that you won quite a few Gulf south conference championships I, i know there there's a lot of uh even at that level there's a lot of uh what do I call it, I guess, not hatred, but there's a lot of back and forth between the schools yeah. on the golf course. I mean, Arkansas Tech, yeah. uh, Harding, <laughs> I mean, there, there's a lot of animosity I think we when could, you get to the course, right? We could do a whole podcast on Henderson State versus Arkansas Tech. There's a true <laughs> rivalry there, and, you know, a lot of credit to, to Luke Calcaterra, and I'll talk about Luke because Luke has – me and Luke – I think we could credit a lot of our success in this game to each other because we wanted to beat each other so bad. And we were so young and so dumb, and we laugh about it now. We're we're friends. But there was a time where we really weren't friends. We didn't like each other. And, and you're thinking, this is golf. Why are we getting this serious? But we wanted to both do what we're doing now. He's coaching North Texas. He got out and is coaching at the highest level. I'm here now as the assistant in Alabama. <laughs> and, um, but – if we didn't push each other, I don't know if we'd both be there, you know, because we just want to beat each other. We wanted to recruit the same kids, and so we both had that passion of, of I don't care if it's D2, we're going to run it like a Division One program. We're going to recruit the best players we can. And so, yeah, it turned into a real almost nasty times rivalry. Uh, but now that's all kind of subdued, and it's been funny to look back on. Obviously, growing up in the state of Arkansas, coaching in the state of Arkansas, working at, at Hot Springs Country Club, you know about junior golf yeah. in that state. How good is it? It's getting better. There's no doubt about it. I mean, I can't necessarily speak to the recruitable kids' names right now, but there's certainly some ones that have committed to, to the university. There's some that are coming up. I think, um, you know, I think it's getting better. There's some great junior golf programs that are popping up. I, I hope it continues to grow. I think Arkansas, we've got great golf courses in Arkansas, as you know, as your listeners know. Um, but the the one thing that we've struggled and I've kind of noticed at, at Alabama is maybe our junior programs aren't big enough or as competitive as enough. Um, but the ASGA has really come alongside those kids and doing a great job providing these elite tournaments in the winter and all these different things. And I think that's big. And so I hope it continues to grow because being from Arkansas, that's obviously a great pool that I'd love to jump back into and, and recruit some players my way if I can. You leave Henderson State, you head to Troy mm-hmm. University. Me being the voice of the Little Rock women's basketball team, I know all about freaking Troy, Alabama. Yeah. There's not much there, Forrest. No. Not much there. No, but what was there was an opportunity, and that's what I needed. I needed an opportunity. I was thankful that Brent Jones would look down at Division Two to hire up. A lot of coaches don't do that. They'll, they'll go from assistant to heads or they'll hire within. And I was fortunate that Brent – looked at the broad picture of who's going to be a really good coach potentially I don't care where they come from and so I went through that process with them had the opportunity and that's all I ever wanted and and I wanted to see if what we did at Henderson State would truly translate at the division one level and I'm fortunate that it did we, we took a team that had won in five years we won three in a row in the spring my first year we won again the next year qualify for postseason and so that was proof to me that okay, my coaching philosophy does work, my style does work, because I didn't change anything. Um, And and to be fair, Troy is a small town, but for golf, a strong history, Mm -hmm. a very strong history. When they were Division II, dominated national champions. And so a lot of great support because of that. Those boosters are very much involved. Those those donors and supporters are very much involved. They have a great facility on campus. Uh, So we had a lot of great things to recruit to uh, on the golf side. So it was a great – stop for me in my career uh, I love those guys still today that they really just took me in and bought into what I wanted to do and um, yeah very grateful to be there for those two years now you're here at the University of Alabama yep. assistant golf coach was it a tough move to leave Troy and come to Tuscaloosa yeah it was hard it was hard to leave Henderson to go to Troy because you leave you're leaving behind 
those players. You're leaving. You build such a bond with these kids because we're such a small team. Mm-hmm. You're talking nine to twelve players on a team. They, you get to know everything about these kids, and so that's tough. Um, the decision as far as what the steps I thought I needed to make in my personal journey and career, not as tough. Um, you know, you talk about Alabama, and you think about Alabama golf. Um, think about Justin Thomas. and hey, He sticks out, doesn't he? Yeah, and then Lee Hodges wins and Trey Mullinax. And, and you got all these guys, like – that have tour cards and and you just think of the history and what and for me as a coach like you look at head coaches who've had success jay sewell's been here 22 years he's got head coaches under his coaching tree all over the country um for me that was exciting on my 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 journey and so that part was easy and we're building a great facility here we talked about it earlier and so we're building Probably, no, probably, it's going to be the nicest facility in, in the country, maybe the world, just for men's and women's golf, and it's coming next year. And I to have a chance to be a part of that, and, to, and you know, it's been special. When you're at a place where, obviously, football is king, mm-hmm. uh, there's no question about that. You walk around yeah. the campus, and you know that football is king, and what Nick Saban has done for the university, because winning national championships helps – the university as a whole. How cool is it to be here where the head coach loves the game of golf? Yeah, it's been cool. I, I've heard we're going to see quite a bit of him in the off season. He's going to be around, so I'm excited to see that. I've, I've got to, to, to be in, in Nick's office a couple of times now, which is great, but you're right. You talk about a guy who's really taken Alabama athletics and built it up, and, and now we all get to prosper from it. Um, you know, And it's been great because – they treat every sport the same, and I know everybody says that, but they truly do. I mean, our athletic trainers are going to treat Nick Dunlap the same way they're going to treat Jalen Milrow, you know, and that that's that's really special to be a part of, and, and the resources that have come because of that are incredible. And it's ultimately you sit around and you go, wow, very lucky to be here and, and doing this. You say Nick Dunlap. What a player. Yeah. United States amateur champion right here at the University of Alabama yeah. from the state of Alabama. Yeah, he's special. Um he was a kid. I was, I was calling all the players when I got the job. I was talking to him, and Nick was the one kid who was like, just immediately talked to me for like an hour. And I got done. I called C- Coach Sewell back, and I was like, that might be the most mature 19 year old I've ever been a part of. He said, just wait. And the way he goes about his business, he knows what he wants to do is obviously p- to play professional golf, but he has his amateur golf goals that he wants to accomplish, which which is awesome. He still wants to be a college kid, which is great. And he's got this whole world kind of coming at him because he is the USAM, and he is tied to Tiger because he's the U.S. Junior Am and USAM, and so all these things. And um, But to watch how he practices and watch what he does, uh, it's pretty special. How has that helped you all in recruiting when, obviously, he's on the Golf Channel, NBC Sports, winning the USAM, and that puts the Alabama program – out there for others to see yeah it helps a ton I mean to to say that's that he came here um, after his freshman year was able to accomplish those things that means he did get better here what I love about Nick is when he talks to people about our program you know he he credits back to the trainers and coach Sewell and he's he does say you know I I wouldn't be here without the university support right now what we're doing he Nick will tell me that all the time. He's like, I wouldn't be as good as I am without Alabama. And that's great to hear because we can relay that to recruits, as you said. Um, and recruits connect with that. They want to be the next USAM champ. They want to be the next guy who's going to be on accelerated PJ Tour U. And uh, we definitely use it to our advantage. We were talking earlier before we got started that, you know, your your wife, you finally got the family moved up here from Troy, Alabama. Was that tough to pick up and, and move? Or was it kind of easy because of its – Alabama. It was easier because it was closer. It was tougher because um, just the transition of of now selling a home in Troy, where the market is with interest rates. So actually, where you're sitting here, this was I got an air mattress. I'm gonna I'm gonna put a picture of my office. I, I this sl- was your bedroom for some weeks. Yeah, the lock. Very many nights. And so Coach Sewell, to his credit, I won't I won't throw him under the bus. He said, "Come stay at his house anytime." But you know, there's some freedom in having your own space. So I would just air up an air mattress every night, deflate it every day, and and then that's big credit to my wife Holly because she's at home. She was still working as a teacher. Uh, Packed up a 3,000 square foot house in Troy by herself. Um, I'm gone all the time because season started, and then we all picked up and moved last Friday. And so she's unboxing a house now. So 
she's she's a special woman to put up with a coach like that but uh yeah it's, it's been it's been interesting and uh we're, we're all thankful to be here now best golf course forrest schultz has ever played oh um probably a lotion i just it's so pure out there a lotion and, and it's arkansas and there was just something about growing up here and about a lotion and finally playing it i think it was really good um but there's some great courses here shoals been really good and, and country club of birmingham's fantastic mm-hmm. but um shoal is uh is up there, but I, I'd have to say a lotion for sure. We were talking earlier, uh, Henderson State, Arkansas Tech, that rivalry. Mm-hmm. How about the uh, Arkansas PGA chapter against the uh, amateurs in the uh, Randy <laughs> Beaver Cup matches? Any rivalries there? Uh, I would love to say there was. It's it seems to be one sided every year. We do, you know, back to Barry. He did. A, he'd always get us fired up to to play you guys, and we'd always come out and and we just couldn't hang. What were some of the What were some of his uh, motivational speeches he would give? <laughs> I don't, I don't know if I could say them all on air, but nothing bad. He just he just told us like we're gonna win this stinking thing one year. It's gonna be right now, you know. And we'd go out there, and unfortunately, it wouldn't work out that way. I but. think there was a year that uh, the pros won, and uh, cigars got lit. Yeah, they need to. Uh, they should light up the the towers for that. <laughs> so that's a. It, it, I will say I loved playing those. They were they were very fun um, for me. It's just a great weekend to to play against you guys, and I think, man, you actually played in a match against each other. And I think you were up my butt. Yeah, I think we played. Um, but I don't know. It's it's just very very competitive that whole weekend of having all these players together. I thought it was special. I'm glad they do it. You beat me, but I can't say the first time I ever played in the event, I did beat Tim Zim in singles. That's pretty so, good. That's pretty yeah, good. I was happy. I tell you what, I, the one thing that sticks out for me is I got. Wes McNulty and I end up coaching Josh which is great but <laughs> I got Wes McNulty my first year and I made a, a big mistake I got to 11 and I looked at the card and I was like oh we're both four under right now we're all square and he literally whooped me in the next four holes and it was over and I was like why why did I even look at the card what happened yeah what yeah. happened what yeah. buzzsaw hit me yeah he went like birdie 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 and then I made a bogey and it was over and I was like wow here we go Forrest, three other golfers, living or deceased, that uh, you could play around to golf with. Who would they be? Mm. If I, you know, if I could do like a foursome, I would put my dad in there. I would put my grandfather, who who played a lot of golf, but I didn't know him. My dad's dad, and then um, I got to play with Tiger, just cause. So I, I'd probably put that as my foursome: um, my dad, my grandfather, and, and Tiger. And I think that'd be pretty special. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Is it easy for you to say roll tide? It's easy to say roll tide. Yeah. It, it, it it's a it's kind of a way of uh, life down here. They won last week, and I was going to Publix to get some waters, and it's just roll tides left and right, and I'm all in. I'm like, let's roll tide, let's go. So, it, um, it, yeah, it's been easy. Forrest, thanks so much for joining me. Yep. Thank you, Trey. Appreciate it. This is Thomas Blackman with Blackman Auctions. Looks like this podcast has really taken off. The guests are incredible. Stories are captivating. It might be Trey's hard work and dedication to the sport of golf and his sincere interest in his guests. Or it could be the support of an 85-year-old auction company that does real estate and industrial auctions all over the country and is owned by a guy that doesn't play golf worth a flip. You guys listen to the podcast. I think you know the answer. If you want to learn about the game of golf, listen to Trey. If you want to know about auctions, call me. Since 1938, better auctions are Blackman Auctions. Heading to El Dorado to check out some live music or to play Mystic Creek? Stay at the Haywood, the only boutique hotel in the middle of downtown and the Murphy Arts District. If you are spending a weekend in Hot Springs, make plans now at the Marriott Courtyard close to Lake Hamilton and Oakwan. Beachwood Pinnacle Hotel Group manages both of these fine properties and you will rest easy knowing that your every need is taken care of. Beachwood Pinnacle Hotels on the web at bphotels.com. The future is not about a bond reaching maturity. The future is what my grandfather worked for. It's what my father carried on. It's my responsibility today. The future is my son's tomorrow. At the Stevens Private Client Group, we believe that our strength builds success, not only for us, but for our clients. Stevens, member NYSE, SIPC.
Welcome back to this edition of From the Shore Grass. I am Trey Shap. It's been a while since we've heard from our rules expert and guru, Adam Carney. So on the tee, Adam Carney. Adam, this comes from Eric in Pine Bluff. He asks, what is a way to correctly put a marking on your ball so you can identify it? It's endless, right? The player does have the responsibility of identifying his golf ball uh, when it's in play. He does not have a responsibility or there's no rule that he has to mark his golf ball at all, although it can make it kind of challenging to identify your golf ball if you happen to be playing a Titleist Pro V1 golf ball. <laughs> a number one. And it's a number one. I mean, how many are out there? So, you know, there's you can go you can go full Duffy Waldorf if you want to, where he'd have his kids, like, color, color his <laughs> golf balls and put pictures on there. Um, you can put a line, you can use dots, you can do, I mean, there's all kinds of things you can do. You can buy them from the manufacturer with, uh, initials or markings on them. You can. And I, you know, I have my, my grandfather nickname on the side of my golf balls. Titleist does that for me, but, uh, um, what is that nickname? That would be bops. B O P S. Yeah. Bops. My granddaughter couldn't, uh, couldn't, uh, pronounce Papa when she was, little which was what my dad was and it was it was bops and it turned into bops so now 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 my golf shoes say bops on them but anyway our rules guru is bops that's correct everyone's every every grandpa's got one trust me it's it's the greatest naming you can ever have (laughs) it's it's the best so i love being called bops but um you know the the other thing to consider is you know um how do you know if you're playing a Titleist one that says bops on the side of it, um, how, how, how can we be sure that's your golf ball? Because maybe you hit one over there in a previous round. Um, so what I would do if I was playing a tournament that was four rounds, practice rounds, I would black out the number. Round one, I played ones. Round two, I played twos. Round three, I played threes. Round four, I played fours. And I had my identifying mark on the side of it. So there's never any question. That's one way you can get, you know, so if you buy a dozen golf balls for however many rounds you're playing, round one, you're playing a one, round two, you're playing a two, and if it's a 36-hole event, you're done. Or if it's a 36-hole, 54, 72, whatever, if you don't lose a golf ball on round one and you want to have the same marking on a brand-new ball for round two, you can do that. Yep, you can. It's a player responsibility to be able to identify their golf ball. And so, you know, if you don't put any identifying marks on the golf ball, and, and keep in mind, scrapes and scuffs cannot be used to identify a golf ball, and they, but they are in regular play every sure. day. Um, but, you know, it, you are required to be able to identify it and say, yep, so that's my mark right there. Um, you know, I'm not, I'm, not a, I'm not a title of staffer anymore, but, you know, it is, it's the most played golf ball on, on, on the PGA Tour and probably in amateur golf as well. You know, if if you're playing a Pro V1, Titleist number one, um, with no identifying marks, I mean, how many other people in the field are playing Pretty that? good chance there are going to be others and, out there. And how many people that played the golf course for the weeks, months, years leading up to that were playing one, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, uh, you know, it's just it's one of those things. It's, you know, I, I just, I use my, uh, my bops mark on it and we're good to go. Bops. Eric in Pine Bluff, thanks for the question. If you've got a question on the rules of golf, send us an email from the shortgrass at gmail.com. I want to thank Beachwood Pinnacle Hotel Group, Matthew Allen, Blair Allen, for their continued sponsorship of From the Short Grass. If you need an overnight place to stay, go to their website, bphotels.com, find one of the properties they manage, and book. That's all you need to do. Hey, this time next year, we're going to be talking about the first ever champion of the Simmons Bank Championship, a PGA Tour Champions event that will be held at Pleasant Valley Country Club in Little Rock. More to come on that tournament throughout this coming year right here on From the Short Grass. Remember, when you find your ball mark on the green, fix it and a couple of more. And I hope to see you sometime soon from the short grass. You've been listening to From the Short Grass, a weekly podcast dedicated to the game of golf. This has been a presentation of the Buzz Radio Network.